On the evening of July 9, 1960, 35-year-old Richard Pete, a former local basketball star, was stabbed to death at the Red Lion Inn in White Township. Despite the fact that there was a good-sized crowd around that night, no one claimed to see anything suspicious. How could that be? And how is it possible that 55 years later, no one has ever been arrested for Pete's murder? I'm LeVar McBride, and this is Cold Case, Beaver County. You got three people of interest still say, I do. Three people of interest, then you get that blank face. Now that's why nobody really knows if she is dead or alive. He was set free and he was set free to go kill. We've never gotten that one break. We've never gotten that one break. You know, we will though. The Richard Pete homicide from 1960 or what everybody referred to was who killed Dick Pete uh, has always been a mystery. This is one that becomes sort of a local legend. Frank Policaro was a rookie patrolman at the time and remembers the location of the crime. I very distinctly remember the Red Lion Inn. It wasn't a pretty place. It wasn't a pretty place to look at it. Uh, uh, as our chief described it earlier, you probably thought it was a chicken coop. Uh, it, it's not a place that you want to uh, spend the evening out uh, indulging in a cold beer or something like that. The state trooper who handled the investigation wrote in his report that the Red Lion Inn was a dirty, low-class tavern which is the spawning grounds for any and all type of fights such as the fight which led to the death of the victim in this case. Ross Kiefer's son remembers all of the calls his father responded to at the bar. And there were times down at Red Lion, he was called down there so many times, I don't know. Sometimes it was so dark in there that he would herd him out under the street lights so he'd know who he's talking to. Uh, uh, Dick Pete was, was uh, so to speak, was a well-recognized guy in Beaver Falls and probably one of the best basketball players that come out of the city of Beaver Falls. On the night of the stabbing, Pete was in the bar with his wife Melda, her sister Audrey West, and their friend William Alford. A dispute erupted among the small group and it spilled out into the parking lot. While Ross was on the property, Dick Pete gets stabbed and all indications from the police report only th one of three people could have stabbed Dick Pete. The three suspects were Pete's wife, her sister, and Alfred. Besides the police chief, they were the only people to come into contact with Pete during the fight. Despite all the people who were there, no one would cooperate with investigators. They were told by people that they are not to talk to the police, and if they know what happened, they're not to say anything. One woman police interviewed at the time told them I will tell you that the word has been passed around to all the colored people that if you saw anything to keep your mouth shut, don't tell anyone anything. And normally, normally in, in those types of situations, uh, if there is a female involved, uh, things seem to clam up. But when there is a man involved, uh, everybody talks. But I, I don't know, this thing, this thing could have been of domestic nature. So we have, out of the three suspects, two women. And so, almost by his theory, we could eliminate it down a little more. No weapon was found at the scene. The police had no physical evidence to work with and three suspects who all knew one another. During the investigation, the police did find a knife they thought might be connected to the murder, but they had no way to prove it. If this would happen now, Almost every bar has video cameras. The parking lots have video cameras. We might have had something from video. Uh, they did recover a knife that possibly could have been checked as far as uh, for DNA. Um, there were a number of things that we would be doing now that could not have happened then. 55 years later, all three of the suspects and many witnesses have passed away. The bar is no longer there. This is the area that we can best pinpoint where the Red Lion Inn used to stand. It's no longer here. It burned down several years ago, and rumor has it when the fire department was on its way up, the residents were trying to delay their response. Matter of fact, they said before anybody called that it was on fire, the residents were delaying the response because uh, they wanted it out of the neighborhood. Detectives want to close the books on the case. 
but it may not be possible unless someone comes forward with information. The people who were the three suspects were all interconnected, so they weren't going to tell on each other. And so I think what we have is a mystery that may never be solved.